last Saturday, in the early hours of the morning, I received a devastating message that said Muhammad Nassim Najafi had died at Yonga Hill Detention Centre. Twenty minutes later, I was on the phone to one of Nassim's friends. He told me that Nassim had been sick every day, suffering mentally and physically. He told me that Nassim had been in detention for over three years. He told me that four years ago, Nassim had witnessed the Taliban kill his father. He explained how two weeks ago, Section 501 detainees had attacked Nassim and that Serco's response to this was to move him to a different compound in an isolated single room for sick people. He told me that despite repeated requests for an ambulance on Friday night, it did not arrive until it was too late. He told me in a pained and defeated voice that I've come to know all too well that Serco officers just laughed at Nassim as his life slipped away from him. He told me that every night Nassim called his wife at the same time. He said that tonight his wife will wait for him, but, he, but she will wait, but now he is dead. Nassim escaped the Taliban and sought safety in Australia, but instead of safety, we gave him death. Initially, we were told that Nassim took his own life. The department has denied this and others have suggested he died of a heart attack. The exact circumstances around his death remain unclear, but what is clear is that ultimately it was our mandatory detention system that killed him. This young man is not the first to have had his life stolen by the immigration department. Two years ago, Ahmad Ali Jaffari died in Villawood Detention Centre in circumstances eerily similar to what we've heard described over the past week. Last year, Reza Barati, a 23-year-old Kurdish asylum seeker, was brutally beaten to death on Manus Island. In September, Hamid Karzai died as a result of medical neglect after contracting a treatable infection. Each death is not a number. Each death is not even merely a name. Each death is someone's friend and someone's son. After having survived and escaped persecution in Afghanistan, Nassim arrived in Australia hoping to find safety and freedom, only to be detained indefinitely in an immigration prison. He wrote these words last year. I can exactly remember, it was late 2011. My heart had shrunk to the size of a small cage. The future that my family had dreamed for me seemed unrealistic. All my hopes were destroyed. I became a person who was tired of being tired. I was not able to walk anymore. I left my family and headed toward the world of loneliness and separation and faced the waves of the endless ocean. Now it is more than two years that I live in exile, but my cultural and emotional country is somewhere else. The place where I spent my childhood and adolescence in, where my real personality formed. The place that I am in love with, with its every mountain and stone. The place that it's dirt for me is better than gold. Even though I don't physically live there currently, but I still have a strong love and emotional tie towards that land. You may not believe when someone says they have left their country because of death or torture. It is as if the entire world has become against refugees. Yes, that is true. For refugee, every situation is associated with pain and suffering. I know that these days, even for the earth, wants to sell its shadow in the sky. Therefore, I am ridiculing the world because this is the only thing that the world has given me. It is always pain and loneliness, and I have experienced both. This time I ask you to look in my eyes and see what I have gone through. In the past week, I have been contacted by several of Nassim's friends who have shared with me some of their thoughts, their heartache, and their memories of their dear friend. I would like to take a moment to share some of these with you. The first friend I spoke to said, he was a very nice man, I can't believe it. I am crying, Michelle. Why, why they keep him in detention center for so long? You know, sometimes when I was chatting with him, I was telling him, do you need anything I can send you? But he didn't want anything from me. He was only telling me to pray for him. All the time we were joking, we played volleyball. Whatever I have is sweet memories that I had spent with him. And another said, I'm not seeing humans in Australia. Immigration killed my best friend. 
To members of the Hazara community here tonight, I say we stand with you and we extend our sincere condolences to Nassim's friends, family and community. Immigration has killed or is killing my friends too and we have a responsibility to try and stop them from crushing more innocent lives and souls. Stop the boats does not mean saving lives at sea, it means go die somewhere else or we will kill you slowly here. Last month, a young Tajik asylum seeker friend, no older than myself, narrowly avoided deportation to Kabul, which would hit, for him would equate to a death sentence. We watched in court as he told the judge, Your Honor, you have the authority to save my life. You are the only one who can save me. My life is in your hands. We watched as the judge ruled against him and we were confronted with the reality that he would be sent back to almost certain death. Fortunately, at that time, Kabul would not accept his return. However, he's been given a new deportation notice for next Tuesday, August 11th, and we fear that this time he might not be so lucky. In response to Nassim's death, one of my dearest friends on Manus said to me yesterday, no one can imagine, but I can, because I might be him. He had a lot of wishes, but now I am crying about my fate, about his fate, and about others' fate. Why is it so dark? Indeed, we are in dark times, but light can be restored, and it is our responsibility to make it happen. Every day I ask my friends to try not to give up, to try not to lose hope that the future will be better, and I do believe that. To those in detention and in the community, you will not be forgotten and we will keep fighting until the mandatory detention system is dismantled, the fences come down and freedom prevails. We will call on our government to stop caging human beings as if they are animals. We will keep fighting for permanent protection, we will keep fighting for a fair and just processing system, we will keep fighting for our country to provide protection to those who have sought it. Responsibility for this young man's death lies with Australia's immigration system and all those who have orchestrated, facilitated and demonstrated complicity by way of silence. One week ago, we lost a young and precious life. Now we must stand together to demand justice and ensure this tragedy does not happen again. Thank you.